I'm Craig Lambert. I'm an adult hepatologist at Indiana University. I'm also the executive director for the Autoimmune Hepatitis Association. And thank you for joining me today to discuss how the AIHA is helping patients and families. I'm very excited to show you the types of programming and educational services that we've provided the past few years since we last had our patient focus conference. Before we get started, however, I do wanna remind us of our mission. This is to provide support and hope to patients and families affected by autoimmune hepatitis through disease education and research opportunities. And the aim of this talk is to hopefully provide an organizational overview and highlight our accomplishments but also to give you a perspective of what direction we're moving. Our members are a very diverse group of people throughout the world. Here's just one heat map of the United States to show where the density of our members really lie. It's worth mentioning that we have over 2,500 registered members with the organization. In fact, we have over 3,600 that follow us on Facebook. And here's a breakdown of the gender of our members as well. It actually matches what we typically see for AIH in the clinic as well, where 88% of our members are female and 12% are male. We had a very exciting year in 2020 despite a pandemic. We were able to hire our very first staff member. Her name's Erin Anderson, and she took over the role of Director of Programs and Advancement for the AIHA. Erin has become an integral part of this organization from the day-to-day -day routine maintenance of our website, from our Facebook posts and getting back to members about questions, as well as doing much of all the other programming and educational activities, the AIHA just would not run without her. As she has shared with many of you, as a patient herself, she has a very clear understanding of this disease and feels really well positioned to be able to help the members of our organization to navigate this disease with our educational programming we provide. Beyond that, I do wanna thank Erin for all her tireless work the past year and a half of her being on her staff. It has truly been a pleasure to work alongside her since she started with us. Yet we have many others that are integral to the mission of the Autoimmune Hepatitis Association. I'd like to introduce the AIHA Board of Directors. Andrew I, Veronica Williams, Lisa Devereaux, Luke Britt, as well as myself, serve on the board of directors and the governing body for the organization. Each one of these members has a close tie to this disease. Furthermore, each one brings a special skill set that really elevates this organization. And I do think it's worthwhile to say a special thank you for the service they've provided over the course of the past few years as well. With their expert guidance, I've really felt the AIHA has been able to move mountains. And I wanna thank each and every one of them for the hours of work and commitment they've given this organization. Another group of individuals that has also been incredibly important in the development of our program in this past year, this is the Autoimmune Hepatitis Association's Medical Board. This board formed over the course of the past year and a half has expanded to 16 individuals. Now among them, there are 11 hepatologists, two wet bench research scientists, one community representative that also has expertise in social work. They represent 10 institutions. Each and every one of these individuals has been willing to step up for the benefit of the AIH patient whenever we ask. They have provided feedback, ideas, and educational topics as we've moved to better educate and inform AIH patients. Each one of these doctors, researchers, and representatives have been willing to give us time effort and energy, no matter what project we've asked of them. Furthermore, these doctors know how important organizations like the AIHA are for patients. They know the benefit of support and community for patients, particularly the ones that they see in their clinic and refer to our organization. They tell me that we benefit them and we inspire them to be better doctors and researchers. The IHA would be nothing without its committees and volunteers. Our volunteer pool has consisted mostly of patients, but also of their loved one and family members. Here on the left, we have the programming and conference planning committee members. Without them, we wouldn't have been able to have the AIHA connected online conference. On the right, we see the members of the fundraising committee, as well as our social media volunteer. I wanna say a special thank you to all the individuals on this list that has come through 
on these committees to financially support this conference and make sure that it happens. We have two other committees that are also critically important for programming that's done outside of this conference. Here we see the communications as well as the community engagement committees. I wanna say a special thank you to these groups of people that again, help us to get our newsletter, our programming, as well as our educational content online to impact most AIH patients possible. This past year was special for many reasons, but one of the most important things that we did this past year was revamp our entire website. As you can see, it's much easier to navigate, professional looking, and again, this would not have been done without donors like you. If you haven't had a chance to look at our website, I would ask you to take a look and see what we have to offer. Some of the most interesting pieces found on our website include the list of patient preferred doctors, as suggested by our members, ways to become involved in research, information about this disease, as well as ways to become a volunteer with AIHA. This website created almost entirely by Aaron Anderson in collaboration with another media group was truly a passion project. And I think the final result speaks for itself. Another project that became very important to us at the AIHA this past year was the launch of the support groups amid this pandemic. I wanna say a special thanks to the support group leaders that support seven different groups across the country. I've participated in a number of these, specifically in the newly diagnosed. The information and community that's shared among patients is incredible. It's truly always a learning experience for even myself. These support groups are growing. In fact, many of them meet almost every other month. If you haven't found a support group that fits your geographic area, I would ask you to look to our website to see how you could become involved and sign up. Yet support groups may be good for other things other than support. And in fact, we utilize the support groups as a way to study AIH this past year as well. We utilize the Midwest, Northeast, Northwest, Indiana, and the newly diagnosed support group to do a focus group to better understand how it is like to live with AIH. Specifically, we invited 30 AIH patients from 16 states to sit on these focus groups. And we did a detailed assessment of what it's like living with AIH in a very granular and high resolution perspective. Now this has been compiled and actually written up and sent in for consideration of publishing. But I'd like to share some of the details with you today. From these members, we found that there are so many negative effects of this disease on life. This includes things such as work, relationships at home, as well as in the office, social aspects that we never thought were important, impacts on leisure, travel, and even the way patients exercise. Not only that, many of these negative effects were tied to things such as disease symptoms and medications related to treatment of this disease, and even importantly, stigma that patients felt from having EIH. In fact, one of the biggest concerns was doctor offices were a big problem for patients. And in fact, we saw a lot of the stigma come from doctors as well as their healthcare staff that were in the offices. Furthermore, we saw the communications from doctor offices were a problem for communicating disease information, but also even management strategies. Furthermore, much of the information that was provided was also conflicting, which leads to even more challenges and anxiety for patients that are trying to manage this complex disease. Beyond doing this focus group survey, we did some other important educational activity this past year. We collaborated with the Cincinnati Autoimmune Liver Disease Group called CALLED and worked to develop the COVID-19 frontline report. Here, every two weeks or so, we developed late-breaking COVID-19 news that AIH patients needed to know. Again, we did this in collaboration with CALLED and University of Cincinnati and hosted a variety of doctors and researchers across the United States. And this frontline report has actually matured into more of a COVID update and in fact, much of our information we provide for COVID updates have surrounded the vaccine and specifically in how patients respond to the vaccine. If you'd like to learn more about COVID, I'd ask you to go to our website as we have a dedicated center for COVID related information. We have a number of exciting things coming in the next two months. You'll see soon the AIHA Sleep School, which will be a free mini course composed of seven different talks highlighting how you can utilize sleep to help treat some of the symptoms related to AIH. 
Specifically, we think fatigue is important and multifaceted as it can be related to a number of different medical conditions, medications, or just disease side effects as well. However, we think the cornerstone of therapy includes optimizing sleep to the best we can, as this is a significantly modifiable act that can contribute to many health-related benefits. This mini course will be put on by the AIHA, but under the support of, but under the support of Intercept Pharmaceuticals. Not only will you see dedicated small lectures from experts in sleep, but you'll also have the option to sign off on the knowledge gained. The past two years has been very exciting for me as an investigator. The AIHA often partnered with Indiana University has utilized that relationship to produce a number of publications in scientific literature that, means, that better explains some AIH related phenomenon. Specifically in the past two years, we have published seven different articles that have addressed important issues that are important to AIH patients, including the use of CBD or cannabinol, the utilization of complementary and alternative medical strategies. We've examined things such as fatty liver disease, environmental risk factors for the development of this disease. That also includes coffee. We've also published our own COVID-19 paper. And then finally, we're working on publishing our patient disease perspective focus group study. These type of relationships with investigators are what we want. And we don't want it just at Indiana University. We want it at all academic centers. In fact, we want to open the conduit of how investigators can come to us to work directly with our members. In order to do this and understand what we want to attain, we need to understand the need of AIH. Specifically, there are some key facts that we must review. First, standard treatments have not really changed for this disease in the past 40 years. Furthermore, we see a tremendous amount of symptoms related to not only this disease, but also the treatments that doctors like I provide. Furthermore, this disease is complex and complex care and focus management in a multifaceted care team just doesn't exist to improve the quality of life of AIH patients. But we think we can make a difference. And in fact, utilizing patients along with this organization, we think we can advance research and lead to new and better therapies and improve the lives of all AIH patients. And this is our goal. And this goal that we'll launch over the course of the next few months called the AIHA Patient Registry. If you haven't heard of a registry, let me explain a little bit. The AIH Connect Patient Registry will be a warehouse of patients and patient information, not only about their disease, but also about the side effects and symptoms, as well as their treatments, but also their outcomes. We're hoping this warehouse of information may entice investigators to study this disease, but also use it as a small research army to address important questions that come up from investigators all over the world. Our vision would include a large group of AIH patients with excellent understanding of their disease, but also possibly in the future paired with genetic or biospecimen data. We'd like to utilize this registry as we work to collaborate with scientists and institutions across the world. Hopefully by doing so, improving the outcomes of AIH patients, not only via finding new therapies, but also improving their quality of life. You'll learn more about how to be involved in the registry, but just a brief overview. This will be done from the comfort of your home and as easy as possible. However, you'll work directly with our research coordinator. By doing so here at the top, you would review study materials on your own and then contact us through the registry email. Once that's complete, the registry coordinator will contact you and you will meet virtually with him or her. At that meeting, you'll learn more about the study and be asked to give your consent to participate. From that point, you can actually enter the registry and complete the survey tools that have been defined. Now these surveys will be completed when you enroll, but also may be completed at other time points. Furthermore, other surveys may be asked in the future, all with the goal of furthering our knowledge about AIH. I am extremely excited about the AIH registry. The development of this registry has been ongoing for the past year and a half. Many hours have been put in to find the best platform 
and the best way to engage patients. And I think that we're gonna knock this one out of the park. I would love for you to consider participating when we release this in the next month or two. Finally, let me leave you with this call to action. I think it's incredibly important for rare disease patients to make sure that they join and participate in organizations that represent them. The first thing you can do today is sign up to be a member with AIHA. It's really simple. All you need to do is go to our website. In the top right corner, there's a join button. Here you'll also see a form for volunteerism as well that I'd like for you to consider too. Next, I would love for you to tell your doctor, either a gastroenterologist, your hepatologist, or even your primary care doctor about the AIHA and what we're trying to do. We think that many of our educational materials may be helpful for these providers as well. Further educating treatment providers at the front line, we think will result in better outcomes of AIH patients everywhere. I would also like to ask you to consider a form of leadership with this organization. We have a number of opportunities. Some of these are included with our local support groups, but also committee membership, as well as the volunteerism. If you have a special skill, we would love to know about it. And in fact, when you sign up with the organization, we have an opportunity for you to tell us about yourself there. Finally, I'd love for you to consider giving to the AIHA. And in fact, we're really excited that next month we'll be launching the AIH Ambassadors Program. This is a monthly giving program. And in fact, everything we've accomplished and that I've shown today has been thanks to the generosity of donors, just like you. We can't continue to support these educational and support initiatives without the support of our members. An easy way to do that is to donate monthly. Whether you can only give $10 a month or 100, every gift is truly meaningful and will be used to support patients and families impacted by AIH. Outside of the monthly giving program, peer-to-peer -peer fundraising and birthdays are an excellent way to raise funds for the AIHA. These can be easily done on Facebook. Further, keep an eye out for our year-end giving campaigns that we typically do in December but also realize individual gifts are also important. You can do this also with Amazon Prime, but also some employers offer company match to donations made for nonprofit organizations. Outside of giving, we know our members also have many other things to give, and that includes their skills and talents. So I'd ask you to dig deep. If there is some skill you have that could be of use to the EIHA, I'd ask you to consider reaching out to us. Once again, donors make this possible, and I want to take a special moment just to say thank you to our generous 2019 and 2020 donors. These gifts have enabled a small organization that wouldn't exist without them. Finally, let me leave you with a little bit of a perspective for the AIHA in the next few years. First and foremost, I think our future is very bright. We have a number of initiatives, and I want to share a few of those with you today. I think one of our most important things that we will do this next year is to really focus in on diet and nutrition. This seems to be very important to our members and so much so that we actually had this as a part of this conference, so much so that we integrated this into the virtual conference this year. We'd like to understand the impact of AIH related symptoms and diet. We're gonna start doing this first with a focus group, just like we did with patient symptoms. Beyond this, we're gonna utilize our new patient registry to better understand how diet impacts different disease symptoms, but also potentially how it can influence the development of AIH as well. Another important initiative is to understand the impact of this disease on underserved groups. We really like to think that we could understand and clarify what are the disease-related challenges that are impacting these individuals as this is a very understudied group in this disease, as an organization that has the ability to do so, we wanna lead the charge and understand the importance of AIH in patients of color. We're gonna do so by utilizing focus groups. We wanna clearly define the issues and be able to react and help bridge those gaps. We think with our patient input, we can develop strategies that will overcome barriers and impact this disease for many people that are underserved. We also wanna focus on our pediatric members as well as their families. Again, this is an area of need, specifically as there's not many educational materials that are available online or in doctor's offices. We'd like to focus on disease-related materials for better understanding, but also to understand and what other families have gone through 
by using patient storytelling. And finally, one of the things that I'm most excited about is the development of an AIHA research symposium later this year. Here, we want patients to have a seat at the table alongside investigators and researchers in this disease. We think hearing the patient input is the most important factor to help drive research. This collaborative approach will help us to identify key research questions and how as an organization, but also the research architecture will drive to answer these questions. I'm hopeful this research symposium will develop into something that will happen annually, and hopefully will be a big force in moving the scientific knowledge of this disease forward. Finally, why do we look so much to the future? Well, it's really about you and your family's story. There is so much to learn about autoimmune hepatitis. And as an organization, we are extremely excited to be a part of your AIH team and take this journey with you. Thank you.